Okay, so now we're heading all the way over to India to meet Shivay, who's created an awesome workout system powered by TensorFlow.js. Hi, Shivay, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you, Jason? Great. So I'd love to hear more about who you are and what you've created. Please tell us more. Absolutely. Thanks for, so first of all, a very big thank you for, you know, having me over on the TensorFlow show and tell, you know, I've been absolutely loved and amazed by, you know, the first two editions. Uh, so quickly introducing myself, I'm Shivai Lamba, currently residing in India. I'm uh, having more than six years of uh, professional experience in web development and machine learning. And I just recently graduated from my undergrad in computer science. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward, you know, to working more in the open source and uh, generally, I mean, in the open source and lovely. Uh, so, you know, the idea behind this particular, you know, uh, physiotherapy assistant. So I call it Aiden, you know, uh, and the main, you know, motive behind, uh, you know, making this uh, particular, uh, you know, w hack was that, you know, uh, normally, you know, for the, all those people who are working full time jobs, you know, they're norm sitting in front of the computer for hours and hours, you know, up to 10, 12 hours a day. So they barely, you know, get time to even do some kind of exercise. And usually if you're, you know, you're sitting in the same posture, uh, then what, what happens is that over time it can actually, you know, develop into a lot of different ailments. So, I mean, you could have cervical problems or, you know, muscular pain. Yeah. So, you know, that requires a, 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 like a visit to the physiotherapist or, you know, at, at least a regular exercise. But mm -hmm. these people cannot even go, you know, they don't even have time to go to the physiotherapist. So, I mean, what, uh, you know, what, if we can, you know, make like a virtual physiotherapist. So that was my main motive, you know, behind uh, making this hack. That's awesome. I, I love the source of inspiration there. And especially in the current times, it's great to encourage people to exercise and all this stuff as well. And, you know, kind of cure some of these things that could happen when everyone's stuck at home, uh, staying Absolutely. in one position and all this kind of stuff too. So this is super cool. Um, I, I'd love to see more. So can you show us a demo? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, if you just play, uh, basically, you know, our platform is called Aiden and, you know, it like it's a one stop stop for all your virtual, uh, you know, uh, physiotherapy needs. So basically, you, you know, when, you know, when we start by clicking on that uh, button, uh, basically it will open up a word like a UI uh, where you will find a virtual assistant and, you know, you will find like a screen where you can actually see uh, that, you know, uh, the different kind of exercises that are, you know, catered specifically for that particular region. So you start by, you know, uh, entering your, uh, like uh, allowing your access to the camera and to the microphone. And then what, as you can see that uh, basically we Starting used PoseNet and uh, depending on the exercise. Stretch. So the first one is back bend. And in case, you know, like if you are doing something wrong, so this virtual assistant will actually tell you that, you know, you're uh, doing something wrong. So it could be like, you know, your knees are too bent or you're standing too straight or your back is too, you know, too much bent. And let's say, you know, uh, in case, uh, and you're actually doing it correctly uh, for, let's say, you know, a certain number of uh, oh, seconds. Sure. Then in that scenario, what it will do is that um, it will actually, you know, tell you, okay, that you're doing it correctly. You have to do it for 10 seconds and then, you know, you move on to uh, the next exercise. So let's say in this case, I was doing a back bend and it recognized that, you know, once I made bent. the correct posture, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, it continued it for 10 seconds. And then what it will Hold do is that once it has, you know, uh, recognize that, it will move on to the next exercise. So this way, you know, we can have like multiple exercises. And, you know, like, let's say in the in, in the scenario, you are doing something wrong, it will actually give you feedback. So the virtual assistant actually speaks out as well. That, you know, if your uh, certain body part is too bent or it's, I mean, you should bend it more. So, I mean, this is how you, uh, you can actually get to know of real-time feedback as well. That's exercise. awesome. And I, I love that it speaks out so that we can get the audio feedback, especially when you're looking at your feet or you're concentrating on the exercise. I'm terrible at balancing, so I have to, you know, look at where, what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So that's really nice to have that audio feedback as well. Um, and I also love the futuristic interface that you have there. That's really awesome. Uh, if we're like in yeah. some sci-fi movie <laughs> working out. <laughs> so really cool stuff. Um, so I believe you uh, mentioned at some point that you're using PoseNet to power this. Um, is it just PoseNet or using any, any other models like face mesh or just, just PoseNet on its own, first of all? So I'll just, uh, you know, basically go through how we came up with this. So basically we used uh, the teachable machine PoseNet uh, module, you know, because that gives us uh, the PoseNet directly, you know, uh, we can use it. So what we did was that we uh, made sure that, you know, we had the correct posture. So we got a professional physiotherapist, right? And uh, then uh, what we did was uh, we captured more than 1,000 images for each and every different uh, posture, right? And then, you know, we created uh, like separate models for each one of them. 
So I mean, like, say if we have ten different exercises, we have ten different models that we load each and every time we do an exercise. Interesting. So you have a model per per kind of pose that you're trying to, yeah. uh, uh, or routine even that you want to recognize. Um, that's cool. That's an interesting way of going about it. Cool. So I, I noticed that you used a Teachable Machine to generate multiple models for different poses and different exercise routines. I'm just curious to know why you took that approach. So, uh, you know, the main reason that why we decided to go with, you know, creating multiple models uh, and, you know, multiple models for each and every different pose was that, you know, let's let's say if you would have created like, you know, a single, uh, you know, single teachable machine with multiple classes and each class, you know, belong to each and every different pose. So there is, you know, a, a higher, uh, you know, uh, error, you know, rate that might take place, let's say, you know, between two very similar kind of exercise poses. So uh, sort of eliminate that, you know, that aspect. What we did uh, was that created uh, like individual teachable machine for each and every different pose. And since, you know, the uh, flow of the application is such that, you know, we have uh, one uh, exercise at a time. So we go from one exercise to the next one. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, this will be much better for the accuracy. And that is why I just decided to go for uh, one, uh, you know, one pose for each and every different teeth. Yeah, model. so understanding the context, you know, allows you to then have a better accuracy on the thing you're trying to define. And Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. So if people want to try this out right now, <laughs> I guess, is there a code pen or a glitch or a website they can go to? Sure. Uh, so basically, again, you know, since this uh, entire project just uses uh, the PoseNet, uh, you know, teachable machine models, so there is nothing that is, you know, on the server side. It's completely running on the client side itself. And, you know, that is the power of uh, uh, TensorFlow.js, right? So uh, I have uh, made a, you know, op open source uh, GitHub link and people, you know, can directly go and try this out. Uh, the only working feature right now that is not there is basically I used uh, the Microsoft Azure and we can also use Google, uh, you know, GCP translation API. Which basically what you do is that you can actually speak, you know, let's say start the start the exercise or, you know, uh -huh. you can speak it in any native language. And what Very it cool. does is that it will convert that into first into English and it will process it. And again, you know, the virtual assistant can also speak in the language of your choice. So, so I basically, also added that. Yeah, the only server side dependency is the voice generation, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So that's really cool. So I guess we'll put the links in the description so everyone can, can go to that after the show and, and try it out, I guess. Absolutely. So I'm also curious to know more about your plans for the future for this project. Uh, do you have any kind of ideas of where this might head? Uh, so, you know, I have been really, uh, you know, amazed by some of the various, you know, innovative solutions that have come up during this COVID. Uh, specifically, you know, uh, apps like House Party, which, you know, allow you to network with other people uh, in, you know, like a chat room or, you know, uh, specifically for, you know, for people to be able to uh, share their experiences together under, you know, one app, because, you know, uh, there's so much social distancing and not going allowed right now. So I would like to, you know, create like a multi-purpose application where, you know, uh, we can have multiple people come in together and exercise at the same time. So, you oh, know, nice. using, some, yeah. <laughs> So using things like WebRTC, Socket.io, which can allow for multi people, you know, to come in together. And we can also have like a challenge based system where, you know, we can give a score based on how accurately and how quickly one can, you know, get adjusted to the correct posture. So it all will, it will have an element of gamification as well. But I mean, I see, you know, this heading in that direction. I think that could be really interesting, actually, uh, making it gamified in that way. I think as an individual, I struggle to do exercise because it's not exciting enough for me. But if I was competing against you first of all you'd probably win but also like you know it'd be much more fun for me to like have that comp competitive nature when doing that as well and you can kind of Absolutely. see the stats of different people and you can have your daily charts or weekly charts so that'd be really yeah. interesting i look forward to seeing that and uh you know there's also one social component uh attached to it is that you know uh so since we have this kind of a voice back feature uh you know which gives you the feedback based on the exercise they're doing so let's say, you know, if someone uh, is visually impaired as well, uh, this could potentially help them out as well. You know, instead of seeing themselves that if they're doing a posture correctly, uh, if they're at home and, you know, if the computer system can actually tell them, the AI can tell them that, you know, if the posture sure. is not correct. So it could sure. potentially help those people out as well. Yeah, I can imagine even like um, going deeper on the description of the voice stuff for if people are struggling to see generally, then you can actually be more descriptive in those voice uh, options Absolutely. as well to go even further. So that, that's really nice. 
And then finally, Shabay, I know you're very active in the community. I think you've actually attended pretty much every talk I've ever given on TensorFlow.js. So thank you very much for being there. Um, I'm just curious to know what you're most excited about TensorFlow.js and what makes you use it for all your prototypes and so on and so forth. And I would love to hear a bit more about your story there. So, uh, you know, I have been a web developer uh, ever since my high school. So, I mean, I do have now almost six years of, you know, uh, web development. And I got interested into machine learning as well. And uh, that was around, you know, a couple of years back. But, you know, one of the main uh, issues that I used to find was, you know, if I want to deploy my machine learning model on the, you know, on uh, my website, then you, you have to like create a, a Python package and then you have to export that, you know, uh, to a Django or a Flask application. Or in case if you're using Node.js, again, it, it required a lot of different steps. But, you know, once uh, TensorFlow.js was, you know, launched, it first of all eliminated, you know, that need. I mean, that kind of dependency that was, you know, like let's say a three to four step. It directly just converted into one step process. So all your all your different activities or, you know, algorithms that you can run on the client side itself. And even if you have like a very custom built model, now you have the ability to convert into a TensorFlow.js model and directly just use it with your web application. So that, you know, that love for uh, the web development and machine learning as I mean, it is growing actually quite uh, fast as well amongst a lot of different people. That was probably the ultimate source for me, you know, to, as a uh, as a motivation to, you know, work around it and also spread about, you know, spread the knowledge about it. And I really got inspired by your works as well. And that is, you know, that put me in the pursuit to uh, do the same. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us today. And I uh, hope you see more of your work in the future. Thank you very much, Yuvay. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason.